Welcome to another episode of Gomology, Fun Without Aware. I'm your host, Nick Johannesson. I'm also the same Nick behind uh, the Gomology podcast, which you may have heard, and uh, writer of Weller's Dad blog. Now, today's outerwear is this bad boy, the Mont Italy Mountain Parker. Now, uh, it's not a new one. They've been making them for about 10 years, I think, uh, but it's one of my favourite jackets. Or Parker, I guess. Uh, for those of you new to the brand Monitale, it's uh, a brand run by Yuki Matsuda, Japanese gent living in California. Most of the stuff they make is made in America. And uh, high quality, different, uh, and an interesting brand. Um, I don't like everything they make. I like probably a few specific things. Make a wide range of flowery shirts, not so much into that. But this, the Mountain Parker, is a stone cold classic. Now, this one I must have been using for about five years now. Pretty much my go-to winter jacket. It's um, perfect for putting on over a wool jumper. And uh, this sturdy wax cotton is great for keeping rainy sleet snow ah the yucky stuff out so let's have a little walk through of it as i mentioned it's a sturdy wax cotton it almost goes as far to say canvas i mean this is pretty heavyweight stuff i'd say 15 ounce maybe 17 ounce we see that uh, this one uh, a lot of the wax is gone by now but i have to admit that uh, I am loving the look of it now, where you get the contrast between where there's more wax and less wax. So um, I'll probably leave it as it is. Uh, you may be wondering why I have a wax jacket that's running low on wax. Well, it's the look of it. And if you have another jacket that works well when it's rainy and sleeting, then it's not so important that they all are tweaked to optimum performance. So. This one's brown. I've seen them in grey, black, blue, red. I had a red one for a while, yeah. Um, so varies from season to season, or rather from year to year, uh, which colour they're available in. Now, uh, it is a jacket with pockets. We've got the chest pocket, the two big ones here. Lovely shape on them. and. Uh, proper press studs here. Now varying how they're insulated, the bottom ones have wool on the inside, the top ones wool on the outside, inside if you get my drift. Um, there's also this handy one for keeping your phone or your wallet in and the one that sort of gets all the comments is of course the one at the back which I think it just looks great, but uh, I don't know if I've ever had anything in it. So, we've got the pockets. The belt, a bit controversial. You'll notice that my belt is a bit more waxed than the rest of the jacket. For the first three years, I didn't quite sort of feel at home with the belt. And then I started thinking, hey, let's try the belt. And now I actually like the belt. It adds another level of detail, which is nice. And this belt is... Uh, nice and sturdy with a proper metal buckle and to stop it from uh, going the way of so many wax jacket belts it does actually have a fastening at the back so it doesn't fall off and get lost. Now how many beltless jackets are there out there? Lots. Now there's also a provision here at the back to roll the hood so you can fasten it. So it looks neat. Um, I actually like the hood hanging like that. Um, hoods, use them or not. Um, I probably don't use the hood that often, to be honest, but I think it does look nice. And when I do use it, it works well. You've got the raw leather tighteners here. So you can uh, 
snug it up. The same raw leather on the zip here. And a good fastening of the hems, the cuffs. Been talking too much about the trousers now. Uh, here again, you can see that there's more wax on the inside than on the outside where it's been left to the elements. Now, press studs, really solid. And that brings us to another point here, this zip. Proper heavyweight, heavy duty metal zip. Now it's a YKK zip, which is interesting because to my mind, YKK probably isn't the king of zips, but they're sort of kind of the Volkswagen of zips and they make cheaper stuff and better stuff. So this is clearly one of the better ones, which is also visible in that it's a two-way zip. Far too few jackets have two-way zips because it's really handy to be able to loosen it up a bit down here without having to walk with it just done up with the press buttons. So, let's open it up and have a look inside. Now, we find another two pockets, very handy. And also the Monitali label here. Every stitch has a sole, tenacious for quality, made in the USA. Nice, nice touch. Now, the wool lining here is an Italian wool lining as it says on this side, Sub Alpino, made in Italy, and there's another pocket. So wool lining of the body, and there's a different lining for the arms, and that does conclude the pockets. So uh, heavy canvas, not a super thick wool lining, but nicely thick. It's a hell of a jacket. Uh, not the cheapest of jackets, though there tend to be a few floating around here and there, eBay grailed forums etc, where you can make a good deal on a pre-worn one. Uh, I got this one second hand from a guy in the US for about half price. It was hardly used. A uh, cracking deal. So, um, and it's one of my most loved jackets. You're asking now, what does it look like on? Well, uh, as I recall, this is a, I uh, can't see the sizing now, but this, they are true to size. Now, uh, those of you who follow me on Instagram will have seen this jacket now and again, as I tend to feature it a few times during the, the season for it. Now, I wanted to mention another one, because this clearly is the, the really cold weather variant. Uh, but there's a lighter one for the less chilly seasons. So just as then, that's this one. Now, this is also the Monitali Mountain Parker, but it's in the rare army tent version, where they found sourced a huge stack of vintage US Army tents or shelters and uh, made them into mountain parkers, which is a pretty neat idea. And uh, you see parts of it in the detailing, like um, these little bits, which a bit daft really. I tend to just, uh, just remove them when I'm wearing it. Uh, it doesn't add anything to it. It just looks a bit silly, uh, but you have all these um, buttons, press studs, from the original army shelters. Uh, there's this bit at the back of the hood, which is clearly from a tent. Uh, but the main thing is that you get all these variations in the shading of the olive tent fabric, which I th think looks great. Now the detailing otherwise is pretty much as the one I showed you earlier. You've got the back pocket, You've got the four front pockets, um, same press studs, same uh, hood, slightly less heavy duty YKK zip, um, slightly different on the cuffs, 
overall a lighter jacket and uh, a bit different on the inside pockets in that there aren't really any extra pockets on the inside. But as parkers go, sort of as an alternative to a field jacket, say an M65 or so, I think this is spot on. I adore it. So this one has also been in my uh, collection for about five years, I think. And uh, they did do some special order ones where they dyed them black, which always seemed very odd to me, totally defeating the purpose of using the vintage army tent fabric to start with, getting all the different shades of green in it. So there you go. That's the Monitali Mountain Park in Army Tent. You saw the one in um, heavyweight waxed cotton with the wool lining. And there you go. If you can source one, I strongly recommend them. In my experience, they are true to size. Um, a 42 inch chest, roughly, and they use the 42 in the winter one. Now, I think this one is in fact a 40 in, in the sort of summer one. Yes, indeed it is. And, uh, yeah, it's always worth trying stuff on before you actually shell out for it. Um, worth looking around for, and uh, excellent kit. If you'd like to get in touch, garmology at welldressedad.com or leave a comment in the comment field. Uh, if you've got specific wishes to jackets you want me to take a look at, let me know. Apart from that, see you next time. Bye-bye.